So will Canadian exports be the next target of Chinese retaliation? And how concerned should Canadian business executives be about traveling to China or about their interests in that country? Ryan Kingston is the Vice President for International and Fiscal Policy for the Business Council of Canada, and he's with me now. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in to speak with me. Uh, Canada exports uh, $23 billion a year in goods and services to, to China in a bilateral trade relationship that we know is worth $95 billion, so it's a big deal. How concerned are you uh, that businesses in this country, and Canadian exports particularly, will be the next target of the Chinese? Yeah, we're, we're very concerned. As you know, China is a very important trade partner for Canada. And it's a trade partner where we've actually been improving relationships recently, particularly in the context of the need to diversify our trade patterns. Uh, so we're watching very closely to see how China responds to this. They've, of course, now detained two Canadians, unfortunately. Uh, and we're hoping that they don't go further and, and escalate this uh, even more. As a company, you're looking at two things, really. First of all, are your employees safe and secure? Uh, and secondly, are the Chinese going to target any of your products that you export into that country? How likely do you think that is? I mean, we're into a long process here unless something dramatic mm -hmm. happens, but um, we have the, the, the top Huawei executive going through what could be a months, mm -hmm. years long extradition process. It's clear what the Chinese want is for her to be released now. Mm -hmm. uh, what should we expect? I mean, how, how this could go on for a long time, which it means could. it could escalate a lot. Absolutely. Our hope is that cooler heads prevail. The Chinese should recognize and understand that Canada is simply responding to a U.S. extradition request and their issue is really with the Americans. However, uh, should they continue to escalate this, all we have to do is look at past examples of what the Chinese have done in other disputes, similar disputes with, with countries such as Japan uh, and South Korea, where they've targeted key exports uh, or in the case of South Korea, uh, they targeted uh, tourism packages sold into the South Korean market, and it was extremely expensive uh, for South Korea as a result. So we're watching that very closely. Do you have any sense of what, uh, you, you have a lot of members, any sense of what sectors they might target if they do start to target trade? It, it, it's very difficult to tell um, because there are a couple of ways they could go about it. They could look at key exports that Canada sends to China. So natural resources are right. generally where we have a strength and, and send a lot of product to, to China. The other area, though, where we're concerned is if you see Chinese citizens mount a social media-driven boycott of Canadian products. This happened recently to a number of Swedish brands uh, as a result of some uh, resistance to um, uh, some tourism issues that took right. place in Sweden uh, earlier this year. So that is hard to predict, but it's something that we have to watch closely. And that, that of course, knowing what we know about China, uh, that that wouldn't necessarily lead, be citizen driven. That would that, that would Absolutely. be at yes. the behest yeah. of a, uh, of yeah. the government there that would say this is a way to punish Canada. That's right. It, it could start and be led by the government, but then you would see uh, a social media backlash as a result. What are you hearing from your members uh, about their concerns about a couple of things, and you've touched on it: either travel to China mm -hmm. or business interests in China. What, what what feedback are you getting? Yeah. So Canadian companies will be taking advice right now from the Canadian government. Uh, and our embassy in Beijing regarding whether or not they should be uh, worried about traveling there. And so far, uh, the government hasn't advised against traveling to China. It's just a matter of being careful about your employees that are in market and ensuring that they, they are safe right now uh, and aren't being taken in for questioning for any reason. Would you travel to China now? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we have a very deep relationship with the Chinese. Uh, it's been an improving relationship. Uh, it it it's, does not make sense to derail that over this one single issue. Uh, so we hope that we can get beyond this, and, and I would absolutely travel there. Uh, some critics um, are cautioning against uh, broadening that relationship right now mm -hmm. uh, because of this. And I guess if you look down the road, um, if you do develop at some point in time a free trade relationship with China or China or a deepening trade relationship. If this is how they're going to react to stuff not connected to trade, mm -hmm. and maybe people make the argument that look, everything's connected to trade sure. at one point or another, uh, why go further down that road if you can't really have a trusted partner? Yeah. Yeah, so one of the main reasons of negotiating a free trade deal is that you actually put in place rules that govern the conduct of your trade and investment relationship. And ideally, if it's a high standard free trade deal, you would have a dispute settlement mechanism in place. So in the event China, say, decided to put in place a restriction on a Canadian export that wasn't founded in any real uh, science, 
you could challenge that with a dispute settlement mechanism and make sure that the trade uh, continues. But so what if it's not trade? What if it's okay? Uh, there's a there's a problem in the relationship, and they don't target mm -hmm. trade, but they start detaining Canadians again. Yes. Yeah. Um, is that the kind of partner we want to do it's, more business with? Th this will always be a risk with the Chinese, but the fact of the matter is they're they're en route to becoming the world's largest economy. If we're going to diversify our trade away from the U.S. They will have to play a role in that. So I don't think we have a choice. We have to engage with China. The question is, how do we want to do it? Do Canadian businesses have any allies in China? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Like, so we know that where the Canadian government stands. We know for the moment they've detained uh, two Canadians. Um, if they're thinking about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, targeting the trade relationship, uh, who are the allies we have in China that would say that's a bad idea? So we have a number of allies based off of very long-standing relationships that Canadian businesses have developed in the market. We have some Canadian companies that have been there for decades mm -hmm. uh, and have dealt very close relationships through joint ventures, for example, with Chinese state-owned companies. Uh, so we do have allies in China, uh, and we have a number of people that, that live there, Canadian citizens that live there, that have been uh, real assets to Canada in terms of uh, building that relationship. So there, there is a core there that understands this relationship. Of course, uh, detaining people like uh, Mr. Kovrig uh, does not help China's case in, in, in that uh, event. So for the moment, you're comfortable with, uh, I think at the moment, Canada has a, it, it has a, uh, an, there's no travel advisory for China, but we do caution Canadians, the government is cautioning Canadians about travel to China mm -hmm. and to be, to be careful where they go. Um, are you satisfied with that for the moment in terms of how it might affect business or do you think there should be you know a, a travel advisory saying be careful or maybe don't go now mm -hmm. no i don't think i don't think that's necessary at the moment and i'd leave it to the canadian government to make that assessment on whether or not they think a full on travel advisory increase is required but at this point i think business should continue and will carry on as usual uh, and of course we'll monitor and if if that changes then uh, business will have to respond accordingly all right brian kingston from the business council of canada uh, thanks for coming in thanks a lot